Hello everyone. In today's video, we will be looking at these four modules here. Monk's Hotbar Expansion, Monk's Little Details, Monk's Scene Navigation, and Monk's Token Bar. Let's go ahead and get started first with the Hotbar Expansion because it is the simplest to explain. So at the bottom of our screen, we have the Hotbars here for your macros. I am also using the Custom Hotbar, which adds in one new one. If you feel, though, that having two visible at one time is not enough for you, you may want to consider Monk's Hotbar Expansion. This doesn't add in any new ones, but what it does is it lets you view all of your macro hotbars at the same time. Again, for me personally, having the two is enough, but if you want to have all of them visible, consider adding in this module. Next, we have Monk's Little Details, which, as the name implies, adds in a bunch of smaller features into Foundry such as sound effects when it is a player's turn or about to be their turn, closing the combat when it's finished, showing the encounter CR, adding in D&D statuses, which if you are using combat utility belt, you probably don't need, but what you can change is how those status effects will appear here, as well as an option to clear all, and then a bunch of other effects as well. The next module we have is Monk Scene Navigation. If you're like me, you probably spend some time in your scene tab here, making sure that everything is organized into folders. However, sometimes when you take the scenes and put them up at the top for navigation, it can become messy and cluttered. That's where Monk Scene Navigation comes into play. It lets you keep your folders up at the top here so that you can easily navigate and keep the same organization that you have here. And the last module we're going to look at is Monk's Token Bar, which adds in this handy token bar down here at the bottom. By default, it has a few things prepared for you. You can see the AC and the passive perception of your characters. When you left click it, it will go to where the character is on the scene. Like so. If I go ahead and right click it, it'll give me a few options such as editing the character, the token, targeting the token, or I can change how I want the movement to set up. Whether I want to allow free movement, no movement at all, which will restrict the movement of the characters in the same way you would have if you pause the game, or if I want to have it set up as a combat turn. To see how this is, we'll go ahead and be shifting to the player view very soon. But as a quick note, you can also, with the token bar, set up requested roles and to give XP to your players. So if I want to request a role from this player, I can go ahead and click here. I can decide what I want to request, what the DC is, if I want to tell the player, whether it is a public, a private, a blind, or a self-role. And we can see here it pops up on the right hand side like so. And then my player could go ahead and click this and they would see whether they passed or they did not. You can also set up contested roles as well between two players or between a player and an NPC. I would need to have this actor, this player, and then choose select a different one. And then I can decide the same things I had with the requested role. This module is a lot like, uh, let me roll that for you in this part of it, in this part of the feature. But as far as I can tell, there's no confliction. You can use both of them without any issue. I have let me roll that for you right over here. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the player's view and see how the movement works. So as the GM, I've changed movement to no movement. It notifies the player at the top. And then if they attempt to move, it'll say movement is currently locked. And they will be stuck wherever they are. Next, I have movement change to combat turn. And when it is my player's turn, it'll notify them at the top. And they are able to move freely. However, if I try to move another character during combat turn, it'll notify movement is set to combat turn. It's currently not your turn. 
letting the player know that they cannot move right now and they'll be forced back to where they should be. That's about all there is as far as the movement goes. We can also see there are some added effects as well for combat. Similar to Monk's little details, there are a number of features you can change in the settings, such as whether you want to show that notification that we saw earlier when movement is changed, how you want XP to be handled, whether you want to show the resource bars, which stats you want to be displayed. Uh, by default, it's passive perception and AC, but you can change those values here as well as change the icons that are used. And one of the handy changes that we have here is if you are also using the loot sheet module, you can convert enemies to lootable by checking this box here. So rather than having to set up a combat utility belt trigger, you can just use this module. And after combat is finished, you can go ahead and click end combat and any dead enemies within the tracker will be converted automatically at your request. We can see here, Acolyte, Convert to Lootable, as well as if I want to give out XP. Now, if you are a game that does not use XP, if you use a mile, milestone system, you can go ahead and change that in the settings. That's where we'll be finishing up today. As you can see, there are a lot of small changes that these modules bring in. So take some time and look through all of the options and decide what you want to use for your game and what really doesn't fit. Well, thank you all for listening. I hope this has been helpful, and hopefully you can use some of these in your game. Thanks, everyone.